Hello and welcome to the in new series of Drishti IAS. My name is Pooja Devedi. Today we are going to discuss Goa Liberation Day. It is celebrated every year on 19th of December. So let us move ahead without any further ado. It is important from the perspective of GS Mains paper. Second, that we understand the scenario as well as preliminary facts. A question will be attached to the comment segment. You have to answer it and I will announce your names if you have answered it correctly in the next segment. Segment. First of all, let us talk about the news. The President of India tweeted her greetings to the nation on December 19th. This marks the Goa Liberation Day and it is celebrated annually to mark the success of Operation Vijay. It was a military action against the, the administration of Goa back then in order to secure Goa as an integral part of India. Moving ahead, now let's talk about in brief the salient features of Goa. Goa is in the Konkan region. It shares its borders with Maharashtra and Karnataka and its coastline with the Arabian Sea. It is geographically separated from the Deccan Highlands by the Western Ghats. It is in the region Konkan. Okay, it is a part of the region Konkan. The language of the state is Konkani, which is one of the 22 languages of the 8th schedule of the Indian constitution. The highest point of Goa is Sonsogor and it has seven major rivers including Zuari, Mandovi, Terekhol, Chapora, Galgibag, Kumba, Jua, Canal and Talpona and the Salas well. Moving ahead, now if we have to talk about the colonial history of Goa, it was under the Portuguese administration since 1510 the colonization of Goa started. It was done by, it was established by Admiral Alfonso de Albuquerque who defeated the forces of the Sultan of Bijapur, Yusuf Adil Shah. Then, after a period of time, at the turn of the 20th century, there was an upsurge of nationalist sentiments that were opposing the Portugal's colonial rule. As it has a freedom struggle history along with the mainland and the other parts of India, which were under the British conquest. Then, Tristao the Braganza Kunha, he was the father of Goan nationalism. He founded the Goa National Congress at the Calcutta session of the Indian National Congress in 1928. This is a very important preliminary fact. Moving ahead, if we have to talk about 1946, we can never forget the mention of Ram Manohar Lohia, who gave a call for civil liberties in Goa along with freedom and eventual integration with India. There were questions, although that were asked about peaceful methods, because India was going through a really tough time. In 1947, there were many challenges in front of India, some of them being partition, then integration of other states as well. Those were princely states and then Goa. So there were questions with respect to peaceful measures that could be employed to integrate Goa with India. And this, these were the methods that were questioned by the armed groups such as Azad, Gomantak, Dal. Moving ahead, now, as I told you, that there were certain challenges. The first being partition, second being integration with princely states. But also, of course, the measures India could employ here could be aggressive. But India would have emerged as an aggressor in this entire scenario. Then India did not want to do that. Nehruji was getting blamed for it. That why you are not, you know, putting out the armed forces into Goa and integrate it. But Mahatma Gandhi as well as Nehruji did not want in the earlier period of time to integrate Goa with force because it did not want to emerge as any sort of aggressor in the international media. Partition was already there, integration with princely states, financial issues plus there was also the problem of Portugal being a NATO member in 1940s, late 1940s. So post-1947, Portugal basically refused to negotiate with India on the question of Goa being handed over to India. Prime Minister back then was Jawaharlal Nehru. He was keen that Goa should be integrated by diplomatic means only because, of course, Portugal was a part of NATO and by extension, Goa became a part of NATO. So NATO, it was joined by Portugal in 1949. Goa by extension became a part of it too. So of course, we all know the important Article 5 of NATO, which 
calls upon the other allies of the NATO member to counter attack if any country is attacking a member of the NATO. So, if India could have attacked back then, then the Western um, Western nations, which were a part of the NATO, they could, of course, retaliate. So Nehru was Nehru ji was very uh, mindful of this. Armed groups such as Azad, Gomantak Dal, and Unified United Front of Goans they became active. So India started the Indian government started supporting these groups and gave them financial, logistics, and armament support. And the armed groups they acted from the basis that was situated in the Indian territory. Then comes 1950. Here, India asked Portugal to open negotiations about the future of Portuguese colonies in India, but Lisbon rebuffed it. Now, he's, uh, Lisbon, uh, I mean, Portuguese said that actually Goa is not a colony, but it is a part of metropolitan Portugal. And then, on the basis of that, transfer was non negotiable. India withdrew its diplomatic mission from Lisbon in 1953. Then comes 1954 when India very tactfully, the Indian government, it denied, uh, it actually denied any sort of visa. So visa restriction on travel was done from Goa to other parts of India. And that is why what happened that uh, between trade between Daman and Diu and Goa started getting paralyzed. And there was also an instance when Indian dockyards, uh, the group of Indian docks, they refused to accept any shipping from Goa because it was under Portuguese rule. Now, between July 2022 and August, 20, uh, August 2nd, 1954, armed activities, they attacked and forced the surrender of Portuguese forces stationed in Dadra and Nagar Haveli. In August 15, 1955, about 5,000 Indian activists, they attempted to enter Goa at six locations and were repulsed by the Portuguese police. In September, on September 1st, 1955, India shut its consul office in Goa. And then back then, the Prime Minister of Portugal, Antonio de Oliveira Salazar, saying that this issue is between India and Europe, it asked London to intervene. Then it protested to Brazil, it's registered, it registered its protest in the international media. Eventually asked the United Nations Security Council to interview. But back then the Defence Minister of India, Krishna Menon, said that no, there are no uncertain terms that India had not abjured the use of force in Goa. And on November, 24 November 1961, there was a uh, passenger boat, we can say, the Sabarmati. It was moving from the Portuguese island of Anjidip and the Indian port of Kochi. It was fired upon by Portuguese ground troops. Now, one person died and another one was injured. This gave India an immediate alibi for armed intervention. Now, because this, of course, started or initiated, this meant war. So, India had an alibi to attack Portuguese, uh, attack, attack the Goan administration on the basis of that. Okay, on December 10, 1961. The Prime Minister of India said that continuance of Goa under Portuguese rule is an impossibility because, of course, the imperialism back then, uh, back then, especially the British imperialistic architecture, was tottering to its fall. It was collapsing everywhere. So, why should a European power still have a control of any Indian adjacent territory? So, that was a problem. Even uh, if we have to go back at the time of independence, Jawaharlal Nehru did say that Goa was like a pimple on the beautiful face of India. It has to be pinched when the time comes. India's Southern Command was fielded, uh, fielded the 17th in Infantry Division and 50th Parachute Brigade. It's not important just to build the momentum. The assault on Daman was assigned to the 1st Maratha Light Infantry. Dew was assigned to the 20th Rajput and 4th Maratha Battalion. Air resources for the assault on Goa were concentrated on the basis of on the bases at Pune and Sambra. Not very important, just understand it. Through Operation Vijay, the Prime Minister made it clear that either Goa becomes a part of India with full peace or with full force. There was no middle ground. The Indian Navy deployed two warships, INS Rajput, and R, that was an R-class destroyer, and INS Kirpana as well, which was a Blackwood-class frigate off the coast of Goa. And with little resistance and a lot of support, 
um, for uh, the operation Vijay, we or India won against the Portuguese. The Sal Salazar asked the Portuguese forces to at least hold out for eight days. He wanted everybody to uh, fight at the last man. Eight days was a time in which Salazar thought he could get enough support from the international or world leaders that it was India which was invading Goa and hence the Portuguese or Portugal. The Portuguese ground defences consisted of 3,995 men containing infantry troops and 810 Goan soldiers and the rest as well. So this is not very important. Moving ahead, now if we talk about how was it finally done. The strategy employed to resist India invasion by the Goa so that um, of course India could be seen as an aggressor. It was centered around the Plano Sentinela. It divided Goa into four sectors. So it was divided sector wise. But there was a shortage of ammunition and communication equipment which was very decisive in the war. Uh, the Portuguese defenses were eventually overrun after fierce shelling from the Indian ships offshore and then the island was secured by Indian troops by December 19th. So December 19, 1961, uh, it was all done and now we celebrate it as the Goa Liberation Day every year. And this is a news piece from back then only which says long live India. Jai Hind and you can see how happy the Goans were. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. But let me take the names of those students who have answered my last question correctly. Ram Prasad Bismil is the correct answer. Rahul, Amandeep, Sagar, Nishant, Faizan, Koyal, Pranay, Gyanendra, Manali, Abhilash, Neelam, Tushita, Vipin, Bipin, Vipin and Bipin, Sagarika, Archana, Chithirak, Rajini, Sumit, Vani, uh, Samina, then MS Aspirant, Anuj, Pramit, Ranjita, uh, Raj, Abhinav, uh, Nibha, Tanu, Royal, Biki, Karuchola, Megha, Raghvendra, Srinivas, RK, Nobudeep, Venkateswarlu, Pushijan, and then Puneet, Thath, Pavra Road, uh, Shifa, Lucky, Chasmi Shivani, Smriti Rekha, Raja Kumar, Pallavi Jangir, Rupal, Kushal, um, uh, and also um, Naveenism. You all have answered it correctly. I've seen many students who are answering regularly. Thank you so much for the engagement. I hope you all are liking this segment. Stay updated. We shall come again with another segment.